It's the final day of this year's MRS Spring Meeting and the final episode of this season of MRS TV. We hope you've enjoyed the last three days of networking and learning, but there's still plenty more to come today. As you're wrapping up your time at the conference, we'll be looking to the future to see what the next 50 years hold for MRS and for materials research. I'm Twee Boo, here for this season's last episode of MRS TV. It's been such an amazing week and we hardly want to leave, but we know incredible things are in store once we all take what we've learned back home. The future of material science is so, so bright, and that's what today's episode is all about. We'll hear from our spring meeting chairs to find out what they're hoping you take away from your time here. We'll also talk to Michael Ford about the MRS New Research Hires poster session, a place for early career scientists to figure out what's next for them. Later, we'll talk to Gopal Rao and Stephen Moss all about MRS publications. And we'll close out our tour of top institutions worldwide with the University of Missouri and the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. But first, we're popping into Symposium X one last time to talk to Taekwon Yan about his work in nanomaterials and energy. My symposium is uh, Symposium X is about you know, how we can design nanomaterials, making nanomaterials and assemble them and uh, incorporate with other kind of like uh, materials and then the, I mean how can we use them? for the like, I mean, the, a lot of different kind of applications such as like uh, energy device applications or health scale device applications and that kind of stuff. So, you know, the, I mean, I've been working on this kind of nanomaterial synthesis for the last like, I mean, pretty much my whole research life, you know, for the last 30 years since I got my PhD. So, you know, the, I mean, you know, so that's why I mean, I always attend the MRS meeting. And, uh, you know, especially I'm much honored to give this a Symposium X talk. You know, the, so you know, the, the thing is, uh, you know, the, basically what I'm going to focus on this uh, afternoon and during the, the, at the, this Symposium X is uh, on the designing uh, nanostructural materials, especially inorganic nanomaterials. And then they can incorporate into some kind of fuel cell e electrode and also they can you know, incorporate to develop new kind of photocatalyst for the like hydrogen production and for that kind of energy issues to address some of the key en energy issues. And the other side of the, the, my talk gonna be like, I mean, you know, we can incorporate this kind of designed nanostructural material into like uh, soft electronic devices so that uh, they can use for the like, I mean, the, you know, for example, treating heart failure, which is really serious issue in the, like, I mean, the, all over the world. And also, you know, the, how can you use that for the, like, I mean, the stretchable or flexible displays you know, the, you know, TV displays, that kind of stuff. You know, that's the, what I'm gonna focus on in this afternoon. I've been working with this kind of designing nanomaterials, but you know, the, 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 the thing is that I just, I don't wanna stop just synthesizing, designing, making materials. I just wanna find some useful application of the materials. So in order to do that, you have to, like, um, you know, I'm expert on nanomaterial synthesis, but you know, the, we have to collaborate with somebody to better in different kind of research, such like fuel cell electrocatalysis. So you know, the, like I mean, the one 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 thing I want to emphasize here is that the, you know the collaboration, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary collaboration is really critical. So that uh, you know the and also like I mean the we can there is I want to just show the future of the, the healthcare devices and future of the energy devices. That's what we try, I try to address here. So, you know, the, I mean, we try to tackle some of the key issues in the energy device areas and also like healthcare and medical devices. That's what I try to address in this, uh, like I'm in the talk. Next, let's head to the University of Missouri, where the MU Material Science and Engineering Institute is fostering collaborative research around everything from nanomaterials to biomaterials to energy to quantum materials, all the way to materials at extremes.
So the Material Science and Engineering Institute offers a wide range of research, and I think our particular strengths include areas like nanoscale materials and nanomanufacturing, biological materials, materials under extreme conditions, and also semiconductors and quantum materials. A unique aspect of the Institute is that it's an emergent grassroots effort. As a campus-wide entity, it brings people together from all across the university with lots of different research interests in, in a way that, that integrate efforts from different disciplines. Right now is a very exciting time to be at Mizzou with respect to materials research. We have a rapidly growing materials infrastructure, and I'm just very excited about the growth of our academic programs and integration of materials with things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. I think we're rapidly gaining a lot of traction in many areas. MRS engages members across generations to advance their careers and promote materials research and innovation. Whether you're seeking a new career opportunity, committed to creating more inclusive and equitable environments, or gaining recognition for educational and career achievements, MRS is here to support your career advancement goals. Live webinars and virtual workshops are offered year round, covering a wide range of topics from preparing for a job search, to getting your work published, to understanding unconscious bias, and so much more. Learn more at MRS.org. Your registration for the spring meeting includes a one year complimentary MRS membership that starts on July 1st. That also means that you have free electronic access to all MRS journals and will receive discounts on registration for future meetings and workshops. Visit EngageMRS.org to find out how your organization can team with MRS to reach the material science community. Find out more about exhibit and sponsorship opportunities, our corporate partner program, webinar sponsorships, bulletin advertising, and more. Don't miss this spring 2023 virtual meeting. Enjoy a full suite of live and on-demand talks April 25th through 27th. Tune in to live virtual presentations of fresh content and San Francisco highlights. Connect with peers and access on-demand content from all symposia. On-demand content will be available for viewing in the virtual platform through May 31st. Don't just read our journals, contribute to them. By submitting your work to an MRS journal, you'll reach a global audience and have an impact that will extend for many years. MRS publishes cutting-edge research, perspectives, and review articles, along with books and textbooks. really energizing and uh, had a MRS meeting has always been a, a good place to meet people from different disciplines, different backgrounds, and from people around the world to actually meet to share insights and, and think about solving the next problems in material science. It's been wonderful to work with the community to plan this event and then to celebrate with everybody on the 50th anniversary of the MRS. Yes, it definitely made the meeting feel more special being 50th anniversary. If we were looking at anniversaries, it's, it's a golden anniversary, right? So it's a good time to actually reflect and project what the material science research would look like, uh, has looked like for the last 50 and how it would look like in the next 50. And it was really interesting talking to the multiple generations of, of kind of MRS contributors who came to the meeting and they value um, different and complementary things in the society and it was really nice to engage with you know the history of MRS and some people who were influential and instrumental in getting things going um, who built it up in the preceding years and um, and then also uh, the next generation coming in who came to this meeting with so much energy and excitement. I hope that the attendees will also remember that we live in a materials world. And that means that it is our responsibility to think about the design, how we use and how the deal we deal with the waste of materials. I hope attendees take away a sense of belonging, a big part of the community, and an excitement for what the next 50 years will hold. 
The Norwegian University of Science and Technology's Department of Material Science and Engineering is the only university department in Norway offering a master's degree program in its field. Let's see how they are using their influence to solve regional, national, and global challenges while contributing to the development of a sustainable society. To achieve sustainability, the field of material science is one of the most important things. That we have researchers working on how to make materials, researchers are looking at how we can make new materials, and we have those who are using the materials. My group focusing on recycling and refining of metals. We do a lot of work on, on using secondary raw materials and waste streams. We look at the properties of the material from the macro scale down to atomic scale. We are able in this way to provide a fundamental understanding of the properties of the material. AEM introduces a new membrane that separates the oxygen uh, producing part of the electrolysis cell and the hydrogen uh, producing part of the cell. In doing that, you save energy and you also get a cleaner product. We are working on next generation lithium ion batteries. We want to replace some of the graphite with silicon materials. I'm here with Gopal Rao, editor of the MRS Bulletin, and also with Steve Moss, a longtime MRS member and volunteer. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Gopal, let's start with you. You have um, been with MRS some time now, so has Steve. How have you seen the field change in that time? In the 25 years since I've been with MRS and the previous 10 years that I've been in the field, uh, I think there have been enormous changes, uh, which is not surprising because material science is a super discipline and interdisciplinary, and because of that, it's an extremely dynamic field. Gopal is right in that uh, the society does attempt to keep up with the latest innovations in uh, technology and in materials uh, research. Early on, we had work that people were doing in uh, studying the mechanisms of pulse laser annealing. We had a lot of controversy associated with those particular phenomena. The society has evolved over uh, all of these years of activities. I love hearing about the evolution. Gopal, I want to also ask you about the MRS Bulletin. Um, you have provided three influential covers of the Bulletin. Can you tell us about each of them briefly? Yes, um, so the three covers that I had sent you earlier, uh, the first one was uh, actually a special issue on energy. Those issues, I think, set the stage and the ground for a lot of future sure. activities within MRS. So subsequent to the 2008 issue on energy, we now see a whole mm -hmm. series of symposia, for instance. The other two issues that, that I had earlier mentioned, one was, uh, again, on graphene, published in 2012. The third issue, which was published in 2015, was on materials and engineering and innovation. Let me um, kind of segue also, Steve, into you know, other programs. What other programs do you think are important to the future of MRS? We've got a nice range of journals, okay? And we need to uh, do things that ensure the um, viability of those journals. The great thing about MRS is the interaction with all of the different people, including the volunteers and the staff. We have, by and large, a group of volunteers and staff that are highly competent, that are dedicated and hardworking people, and that put the society and the needs of the membership and the community ahead of their own personal needs. In uh, recent years, we've really, I would add, that we've expanded our virtual offerings, meaning mm. we now have a virtual component of each of our meetings. We've very much expanded our offering of virtual webinars, virtual workshops, many of them in collaborations with other societies, other organizations beyond the United States, so outside. Thanks so much, Kopal and Stephen, for sharing your insights about MRS publications and programs. Now, let's learn more about the MRS new Research Hires poster session and the opportunities it provides for early career scientists on the job hunt and for recruiters, too. 
This poster session for new research hires is great so that candidates can um, meet with potential recruiters, um, but they also just get to pitch their previous research in the context of looking for a job rather than you know, showing what they did in their research. So they get to talk a lot more about themselves than they typically would in a typical poster session. Recruiters get to see probably a lot more people than they normally would and a lot more people who are outside their network. So, um, you know, at a typical recruiting session or, or you know, typical job recruiting, they might, um, they might not see people from all over the world, but MRS attracts people from all over the world. And so it's a great opportunity for them just to see more people, get more diverse hires potentially. I think networking is the number one reason that I come to MRS. Um, you know, it's a big conference. There's people from all over the world with diverse backgrounds. And if you're, you're here and you're not networking, I think that's a, a, you're, you're a missing an opportunity. You know, that shouldn't be missed. Early career scientists, um, they are the future of materials research. And at the research hires poster session, we see a lot of great work being done and a lot of excitement in the candidates. And, and that kind of projects onto me and, and makes me excited about the future of materials research. Well, that's a wrap on the 2023 spring season of MRS TV. We hope you've enjoyed coming along with us to see all the amazing things that this 50th anniversary meeting has had to offer. If you catch yourself thinking about something you saw in today's episode, don't worry. You can keep watching MRS TV on screens around the Moscone Center, on the MRS website, in your hotel room on Channel 67 at the Intercontinental, or on Channel 60 at the Marriott Marquis. And finally, on YouTube and Twitter. We hope to see you again this fall when we'll be back in the one and only Heinz Convention Center in Boston. I'm Tui Vu with MRS TV, signing off. <laughs>